If you'd bought a flat in Manchester in 2013, just 10 years later, it would have doubled in value. So the question is, how can you predict this? How can you get ahead of the market and see this type of boom on the horizon so you can invest in the right place at the right time? Well, over the years, we've used two data-driven concepts to invest in hundreds of millions of pounds of property across the UK. So today, I'm gonna to teach you how you can use basic data to predict the next property boom without a big budget or team of analysts. And at the end, I'll give you my predictions for the next few years and reveal a few property hotspots that are set to boom in the years ahead. So as we all know, in the UK, we have different seasons of the year, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Lots and lots of winter. It isn't possible to predict on a day-to-day -day basis exactly what the weather will do, but we know in general that certain times of the year are going to be colder, hotter, or rainier. And it's the same with property. According to the 18-year property cycle, property prices move in a set pattern that repeats again and again and again, and goes back for hundreds of years. First, there are seven years of moderate growth in prices. Then there's what's called a mid-cycle wobble, where prices go down a little bit, then come seven years of stronger growth, culminating in two years of particularly strong growth at the end, known as the winner's curse. This is because anyone who outbids everyone else to become the winner of a property during this time is going to live to regret it. Because when everyone wants to buy, banks are keen to lend, and prices get pushed up and up, what may have started as a rational growth in prices turns into a mania as people are desperate to get onto the ladder at any price. And of course, if there's one thing that everybody knows about a boom, it's that it's followed by a bust. So suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, everyone realizes how completely overpriced and property has become. Activity stops, banks pull back their lending, and prices plummet. It takes four years for prices to fall and eventually bottom out before they start growing again which makes up the remainder of the 18-year cycle. Now, everyone gets caught up on the 18-year part of this, and I can see why. It's an alluring thought to believe that you can mark on your calendar exactly when a market is going to hit the top, making sure that you sell out beforehand and are then in a position to buy back in cheaper later. But in reality, 18 years is just an average. Past cycles have run so much longer and shorter that I don't believe the timing is useful to focus on. But there are three secret insights from the property cycle that I use to guide all my investing activity. The first is a simple reassurance that property prices are cyclical. Every cycle starts from a higher point than the last. So if you just hold on through multiple cycles, you will come out ahead. Secondly, you tend not to get a crash without a preceding boom. If you look back through history, it's hard to find any evidence of times that property prices have been flatlining or even growing slowly and then suddenly collapsed a whole lot lower. It's always the case that there is a boom, an overexcitement and an overlending that pushes prices up beyond where they should be and serves as the eventual trigger for prices coming back the other way. It's also very hard to find any evidence of prices just grinding gradually and gently lower over long periods of time. Property prices tend to be either going up or crashing. The path down is not gentle. So then you can put this all together and pair it with the third insight, which is that booms and crashes are driven by a combination of overenthusiastic buyers and greedy banks. You can think of it as two children in the playground egging each other on to climb higher and higher on the climbing frame. As one wants to go even further, the other gives him a leg up, only for him to slip and take both of them crashing down to the floor. This is how it is with banks gladly enabling buyers to borrow more and more money because more lending means more profit for them. Sellers know this money is out there, so they put their prices up. And buyers are still happy to pay those prices today because they believe they'll only be higher again next month. It's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. And both buyers and banks do get hurt when prices climb too high and come crashing back down. And just like those kids aren't gonna be brave enough to get back on the climbing frame for a while, it takes years for both banks and buyers to regain their confidence. Despite property prices being far lower than people were happily paying before the crash, making it objectively a better time to buy 
No one is interested. So how can we take advantage of this? You can make use of the cycle without getting caught up in trying to count years. If everybody around you is desperate to buy property, it's hard to even secure a viewing of a property and the bank is making it very easy for you to borrow, maybe it's the time for you to pull back a bit. And on the contrary, when prices have already fallen and everyone's at their most negative, it's probably time to be a bit brave and enter the market if you can. But here's the thing, not every part of the country moves through the cycle at the same speed. It tends to be the case that the whole country synchronizes and collapses all at once because it's some big macro event that serves as the trigger for confidence to evaporate and prices to plummet. But progress towards that peak moves at different speeds in different areas. We've already seen in the current cycle that London got off to an absolutely rocketing start between 2011 and 2016 before slowing down substantially. And as London slowed down, other regions like the Midlands and the Northwest picked up speed. This is not difficult to track. There's data all over the place showing you how each region is currently performing, allowing you to get ahead of the trend and buy into somewhere that's yet to grow if you're brave enough. Or you can do what we do and buy in at the early stages somewhere that's already on the up, which also allows you to avoid areas that have already had their run and are going to have less relative growth in the years to follow. So now we have a good idea of when to invest in different areas, but the real money is made when combining this with understanding exactly where to buy. So now I'm going to reveal the strategy that we've used successfully for more than a decade to buy in all the right places without a team of PhDs crunching numbers for us. When you play a game of dominoes, the aim of the game is to line everything up perfectly, knock one over, and then watch as they all fall down. Now in property, we don't have the luxury of lining everything up exactly as we want, but we can apply a similar logic to our investments. When growth comes to an area, it always comes first to the economic center. Again, we saw this in London as it recovered from the last crash. The first properties to grow in price were expensive properties in prime central areas. As that domino fell, it knocked over the next one, which was slightly less exciting properties a bit further out. And as that fell, it knocked the next one, which is more outlying regions of Greater London. And then the home counties, and then the wider southeast. We've also seen this in Manchester. As a building boom got underway in Manchester in around 2016, city centre prices were the first to explode upwards. This had a knock-on effect for nearby areas with strong transport connections like Stockport and Sale, and then tipped over again into towns a little further out in Greater Manchester. So how do we take advantage of this? Well, Manchester city centre is a perfectly reasonable place to invest even now, but prices have already gone up a lot. However, a couple of years ago, I invested in Bolton in Greater Manchester, which as it happens, has plenty of redevelopment of its own going on, which helps too. But what I was interested in was the Manchester domino effect. As people got priced out of the city centre, they started looking for cheaper, but still commutable areas a little bit further out. So areas with strong transport links. Bolton very much ticked those boxes. And lo and behold, the following year, property prices grew faster than almost anywhere else in the UK. This simple insight is one that we've used over and over again to make investments in areas that are just about to experience big moves. It's a bit like how the best footballers aren't following where the ball is now, but seem to have an uncanny knack of anticipating where it's going next. Strikers who score tap-ins aren't just lucky, they've read the game to put themselves in the right place by the time the ball arrives. So now that we understand these two methods, how can we apply them to real life and identify locations that might be of interest to us in the future? Well, the easiest way to do this is to look for regions that are already growing and then follow the dominoes. I've already given you one example of how I did this. All you need to do is see where is growing the most and then follow the transport routes out from there. Because remember, this is about access to the economic center. So transport routes are the key rather than mere geographical proximity. So as a very simple example, look at Birmingham. Birmingham is near the top of the capital growth table right now. And as a result of the multi-billion pound regeneration plan that's going on, it'll probably stay that way. So follow the transport lines out and you're into areas like Walsall, Dudley and Wolverhampton. These are all towns that we've either invested in over the last year or are actively attempting to. Then take Nottingham. Nottingham has also been near the top of the Capital Growth League for several years, and I've made multiple investments in Nottingham myself. But last year I invested in Loughborough, 
which is nearby and seems like it could be the next domino to fall. I've also invested in Derby, which has got so much going on in its own right that I don't think it can count as being part of the Nottingham domino effect. But it follows the same principle of buying into a region, in this case the East Midlands, that's performing strongly. Or if you want to take it a step further, you can use the 18-year property cycle to identify areas that haven't had their growth yet, so it might be still to come. Take the Northeast, for example. The Northeast has been consistently one of the worst performing regions, but I suspect that as we come towards the end of this cycle, it'll suddenly fly up. Because remember what I said, each area moves through the cycle at different speeds, but it all tends to peak at the same time. So if you can get in at the right time, you could get that growth nice and early in your investment period. However, even if you pick the right place at the right time, all that work will be for nothing if you don't pick the right property as well. So check out this video next, where I talk you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to pick the perfect property.